What's up everyone and welcome back to another episode of Fatal Garage. I'm Josh Linnell and in today's episode we're finally going to be installing an Extreme DI low pressure fuel pump into this Cadillac ATSV. Checking out our new low pressure fuel pump here by Extreme DI. Uh, it pretty looks pretty much like the stock unit here uh, so you're not going to be able to see too many differences. Uh, we they do provide a new gasket for us which is fantastic and a new fuel level float uh, which is also good which we'll want to install here on our new low pressure fuel pump. Uh, as you can see the connections here and here that we'll have to make inside of uh, the, the fuel tank itself uh, and then their connections on top that we make on top of the fuel tank it's on top of the fuel tank uh, and then one electrical connection here as well so this unit like i said looks pretty much like the stock unit we're going to go ahead and remove that and put this in its place and it'll flow a much heavier rate uh, and then we should be able to handle it to about e60 with this Moving underneath the car, you want to go ahead and remove your exhaust like we already did here uh, to expose your drive shaft, uh, which is above it, uh, and our heat shields that go along the back here uh, that also protect our drive shaft that we need to undo. So first things first, we're going to undo this, this heat shield, undo this safety bracket right here, uh, and then remove our drive shaft from the car. To remove this bracket, it's four 13 millimeters. Before we undo and move this heat shield out of the way, uh, we need to move these coolant lines uh, first out of the way. That way uh, we have access to that. Uh, to do so, uh, we need to undo these clips here in the back. Two 10 millimeters right here. And then we're gonna undo two clips, uh, one on each side right here, and then fold these lines back more or less. Uh, towards the rear of the car. That way we're not ha having to undo them from the rear section of the car, the rear diff. Uh, and then we're gonna put a cap in uh, the lines. That way we can minimize the leaking from the lines. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and do that. And you guys can watch. Push up on the clip, slide a flat blade in there, and then release it. Coming forward on these lines, you want to locate these black caps right here and slide them forward, one on each side. And then there is a W clip that you need to remove. Slide a flat blade screwdriver is what I like to do, a really thin one, to feed that out. Same with the other side. So it looks like my caps actually don't fit, uh, which is fine. Uh, but just wrap the line uh, with the paper towel looks like and that seems to, to hold the fluid just fine and uh, mitigate dripping uh, enough and then do the same to the other line and then we'll swing these back out of the way and that way we continue on with removing the heat shield. With our coolant lines folded back out of the way, go ahead and remove these six 10 millimeter bolts. and then you just slide out your heat shield. Next, on the lower part of our gas tank, there are two covers, one on each side. This is the one on the passenger side right now uh, that we wanna go ahead and remove. It's uh, two 10 millimeters here on this side, uh, two plastic 10 millimeter nuts right here, a 10 millimeter nut over here, a 10 millimeter bolt over here, a body uh, press clip over here, and then a T20 Torx bit right there. So we're gonna go ahead and remove all these and take this panel down and then we're gonna do the same to the other side. And then do the same to the other side. Next up, we wanna go ahead and start removing the dry shaft. Uh, what I did here is it made a mark here on the impeller for our rear diff and our dry shaft, uh, just in silver Sharpie here, so it won't come off uh, when I rub it or anything like that. So mark here and here, that way they line it up perfectly when I put them back in. Uh, and then also do that on your transmission side as well, that way it lines up properly where it needs to go 
uh, when we go back and reinstall this. Since everything is kind of weighted and balanced, you want to make sure that that uh, goes back in the correct order. So next we're going to go ahead and break these loose. These are 18 millimeters. Uh, there's three of them that go around. Three here, three on the transmission side, uh, and then that carrier bearing in the center, uh, which we'll remove at the final bit. Now that we have the bolts out on both ends of our drive shaft here, uh, it's really just held in here by this carrier bearing. Which is 215s. Undo the first one since it's inside. Undo the second one. And I like to just pull this up here tight and it kind of still keeps pressure on the drive shaft that way it doesn't fall down. Then I'll put my other hand up here. And then set your drive shaft down. The next thing we want to focus on here is removing the gas tank from the car. Uh, to do so, we want to locate our fill pipe here. Uh, and there's a seven millimeter worm gear on top that we want to go ahead and undo. Uh, make sure that your gas tank is as low as you can possibly get it before you start doing this. Uh, obviously fuel is heavy and liquid's heavy and so anything you're doing with weight and if you're, once you're lowering this down and everything like that, you don't want any sloshing around and so um, just be wary of that. And obviously the, the smell of gasoline obviously. So make sure you're in a well ventilated area as well. Uh, I had the garage door open behind me and uh, a fan going to circulate some air. Uh, and I'm gonna go ahead, undo the seven millimeter, and then we're gonna undo these two clips right here as well, uh, before we start undoing the straps for the fuel tank and lowering it from the car. I'm gonna push it off to the side. And then to undo these clips, pull the green tabs to the side, pull back. I'm just gonna remove this green clip altogether and I'll put it back at the end. Just get in my way. Push this one off to the side. There's also a white tab that you need to depress on the top end before you can pull apart. Now, if you have any rags close by, that way you can capture any fuel that may have leaked out. To lower the fuel tank from the car, you need to remove these two fuel tank straps on either strat on either side. They're held in by a 13 millimeter, two 13 millimeters on each side as well. Uh, we'll hold those in place. Uh, I like to use this, which is kind of a, a motorcycle jack or a lift table, whatever you want to call it. Um, and I like to just use it for for lifting things like this. Uh, it's not quite heavy duty enough for like a transmission. It only lifts 300 pounds, but perfect feel like a fuel tank. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and use this in its place. Lift this up, remove those 13 millimeters and start dropping this fuel tank out of the car. Also, when you're undoing the fuel tank, you can reach up here under the electrical tab. Uh, there's an electrical connection on this side of the fuel tank that you want to go ahead and undo. And the electrical line runs up and over the fuel tank over to the passenger side. So we got our rest of our electrical connection here. Just going to go ahead, undo our electrical connections and free from the harness. Then I'm just gonna push our electrical harness off to the side. Now we have our fuel tank out of the car and it's actually sitting here on the ground. So it's nice and stable because uh, we're gonna need to take off this, which is our fuel pump. Uh, this is our cover, which kind of acts as the lock ring, uh, which goes on top of our, our low pressure fuel pump. Uh, and then it'll slide out basically of the, the fuel tank. So uh, I'm gonna go ahead, unhook this line right here and this line right here and push them out of the way. Uh, that way we have full access to work in this area. Just slides in there. Just gonna move that green clip all the way. 
press in on this tab and then pull out. I'm just gonna set this off to the side for now. Now, since we don't have the actual lock ring tool itself, uh, you can see that there are these little slats that, that slide underneath here and kind of lock it in place with these teeth. Uh, but what we have is we have these areas as well that we can kind of tap it with a hammer. Uh, and that's exactly what we're gonna do. Uh, we're using a flat blade screwdriver and tap it with a hammer to, to unlock it. Now what you wanna do, just put it right there inside that tap ring. I like to put my foot on the back side of this so it doesn't rotate with it. Give it a tap. Go over to another one. And give it a tap and kind of work your way around until it releases. So if we look at our new uh, low pressure fuel pump, we can see the connections that we need to undo inside. Uh, we have this connection right here uh, that's gonna have a line coming to it on the inside of the fuel tank that we need to undo, as well as this connection right here on this port as well as this connection right here that we need to all undo inside the fuel tank. What I like to do is actually tie a white zip tie uh, around those connections when I undo them from the lines uh, and put them onto the lines that sit down into the fuel tank. Uh, that way when I'm looking for that line, installing it onto the new, press, uh, the new low pressure fuel pump, uh, you'll be able to find them easily because it's a white zip tie so you can be able to see inside the fuel tank fairly easily when you're fishing around for it. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and do that. It's going to be kind of messy uh, and also it's a little hard to, to really see because it's really tight down in here. Uh, but I'll try and film it as best as I possibly can. And I just toss those over onto just basically a, a drip pan uh, that I have sitting over there that I just, uh, because obviously that, that low pressure fuel pump is gonna now be dripping a whole bunch of fuel for a little bit. So uh, I just have it over there on that drip pan that'll kind of just probably toss in the trash afterwards uh, after all the gasoline has evaporated. Before installing our new one, uh, I like to just go around and get this area clean up. Before we install our new gasket here, take our new gasket, put it into place, take our new low pressure fuel pump. You want to slide on your new level here, slides on this side until it locks into place. Now with our zip ties, as you can see, now we have all of our connections nice, easily invisible, and we can kind of move them to the side however we need to. Lower in our new low pressure fuel pump. Making connections back uh, inside your fuel pump or fuel tank here. Uh, your straight connection that's inside your pump or your fuel tank goes to the connection that's in line uh, on that flex line with that T fitting. Then we can kind of push that to the side. Our 90 degree fitting here connects into the 90 degree fitting that comes out vertically out of our pump. Connect that into place. And then our last connection uh, is the big one that comes straight up. 
slide that in until it clicks. I'm going to undo that zip tie. And then I like to just double check while I'm in here that everything is nice and seated properly. This might become in handy if you have a friend um, or just press down by yourself. And tap it into place. Just the opposite of how you took it out. Once you have the cap back in place, which is basically just tapping it in place uh, in reverse order of how we took it off. Uh, and then we reconnected this fuel line here, put back on the safety clip, which is the green clip here. And then this fuel line here with a blue safety clip. Now this fuel tank is ready to go back in the car. I'm going to go ahead and plug back in our electrical connections over here. Do that one click. And then do that safety clip. And now we're going to go ahead and put this in the car. Once you got your full tank pretty much up into place, don't forget to reinstall your fill neck here. Uh, I like to do it kind of before I get the fuel tank all the way up, just make it a little bit easier. Uh, to bend it into place. And raise the fuel tank the rest of the way up. And slide in these two connections here. And don't forget the safety clips. And tighten down that seven millimeter on that worm gear. Grab our strap here, one of our straps for our fuel tank. that sucker out of the way. I'm going to lift the car up and that way I can double check all these connections standing. I've double checked all the connections. Uh, they're all good. Next you want to go ahead redo this connection down here and now we can reinstall the drive shaft. We're installing your drive shaft. You want to make sure that you have your mark that you pointed uh, painted onto your marking on your in your uh, housing of your transmission and also the housing of your trans of your differential matched to your drive shaft that you marked already. Slide it up into place. I'm gonna slip in two bolts here to hold it. Align your front end. Tighten up the center bracket here, 215 millimeters. I'm sort of sliding in these bolts. Uh, let's put a little bit of new Loctite glue on there to hold them into place. And then slip these bolts in as well uh, with a little bit of blue Loctite on them. Line them all up before we start tarking anything down. Now we've tightened them all down to about finger tight. Uh, you want to torque them down to 66 foot pounds and you want to do this in kind of a triangle pattern. Uh, do it on these three 66 foot pounds and then the three by the transmission to 66 foot pounds as well. Reinstall the covers here for the fuel tank, one on each side. 
We're gonna install your drive shaft shield here. Next, we're gonna install your drive shaft safety loop. You notice it's kind of tapered a little bit on either side. Uh, the taper goes towards the back. Next, I'm gonna drive one of my transmission lines here. That went back to my rear diff. Reconnect it. And reconnect our other line. Replace the W clips. Position the line in place. Same to the other side. And then reinstall the line into these clips. You might need to reopen them up with your flat blade screwdriver like you did earlier. Now we're gonna go ahead and put the exhaust back into place, lower this onto the ground, start it up, take it for a test drive. All right guys, so we just took the car for a test drive. Everything seems to be running great. So that's gonna go ahead and wrap up the installation of the Extreme DI low pressure fuel pump. If you did like this video, feel free to give us a thumbs up, smash the subscribe button if you wanna see more content just like this. And just like that, I'm out.